war type houses, the small ones? Some of the small ones were, yeah. I'm Gladie Wicker, and this is my sister Ivy Wicker. We lived on Queen Mary Street in Overbrook. Uh, my mother and Ivy and I left Overbrook in '65 and came to Egan Road. My parents were Alfred Wicker. My mom was Edith uh, Born. My father was from Essex, England. My mom was from Janeville. So I had two brothers and two sisters. My brothers were Alfred Wicker. My other brother was Arthur. And my sister was Dorothy. The brother that served in the war was Arthur. And he uh, was overseas. His legs were bad. He was in a foxhole and was put blind for a bit. And they took him and uh, hospitalized him for a while. And then he, uh, he got better and they put him right back in the foxhole. My, my other brother uh, uh, was not well and uh, he stayed at home with my parents. My brother was not allowed to go to school because he was an epileptic. We, uh, my sisters and I went to High School of Commerce. My sister Dorothy, uh, if it was winter, she crossed the river and got a bus there. Uh, my sister Ivy, she walked through the gas works. And my sister crossed over Herbert's Bridge and went through the gas works. My sister Dorothy would have crossed on the ice on the river and she would have got a streetcar on the other side. That streetcar went right out to Commerce. For me to go, I went by streetcar too. My sister Dorothy worked at the CBC. Uh, my sister Ivy worked at Bank of Canada and then went to the CBC. And I worked at Livestock Records. And Livestock Records was located on Queen Street. We all got to work by the bus. And it would take us to the shadow. My father was a bricklayer. My father built our house. He had one at 24 Queen Mary, and he had the one we lived in at 93 Queen Mary. It's the house in Overbrook at 93 Queen Mary. It was a three-story house. It, uh, my mom said she wouldn't marry my dad unless he had a house for her to move into. She didn't care if it was finished, but it had to be there. So he did. And it was in the, kit, in the ground floor. It had a, a kitchen, a living room. That's it, eh? And a hall kitchen, living room, and, it was a back. and there was a back, well, at that time you called it a shed, but it was attached. Then you went upstairs, and it had two bedrooms, a hall, and a, and a bathroom. Then you went to the third floor, and it had two bedrooms. And uh, she, she liked 24 Queen Mary better, but in the Depression, you could get more money for 24 than you could for 93. So we stayed at 93 and rented 24. 
we had a very big garden, very big uh, vegetable garden. And then on the side of the house, after the driveway, we had flowers. And we had flowers in the front. We had a big veranda in the front. And we had flowers there. Well, my father's family, other than his brother who lived on uh, Kiefer Street, uh, they still live in England. I still write to one of them. Um, the, uh, her, her sisters and my uncle, her brother, he owned Bourne's Sporting Goods on Rita Street. And that's where we got all our sporting skates and what have you, because he would give her a discount, and uh, so she was able to get, and she used to get the boys, all their stuff. My mom's family lived on Pig Street. The street now is known as Palace. It, my mom went to school in uh, Jadeville Public School. I went to school at Overbrook Public. The school was about uh, two blocks from my home on King George Street. Old Republic uh, was two rooms. Uh, it went from grade one to grade five on the first floor and from six to eight on the second floor. We had two teachers and Miss Armstrong for the younger group and Miss Arthur for the older group. And that was for my whole family. I went through the both classes as my family did. There weren't any other schools in Overbrook at the time. There's now Queen Mary. We always played pretty freely and we had all kinds of games and even the parents would come out and play the same games with us. It, it was a friendly place to be, and uh, my relatives were there too. And I, when I started skating, I would skate in the ditch because that was the only place. The skate was up past our place and back and forth. And if my parents wanted me in for supper or anything, I just hid in the culvert until I thought they were gone, and then I'd start skating again. When our boys came along, they had a rink. And uh, that they, was an outdoor rink? they had an outdoor rink, yes. And, and they the also rink. had a shack that they could change their skates. And that was on the corner of. Queen Mary, right up at the school, and it, it was a nice rink. I think, I don't think you could play hockey on it. I think it was just for skating. My family attended St. Margaret's Church in Eastview. I attended Sunday school at St. Lucy's Hall in Overbrook. St. Lucy's Hall was located on King George Street, and it was about a block from my home. St. Lucy's Hall was just one room, divided off into classes for, for but just with the chairs or. We had a small kitchen with nothing in it. Uh, you could make a sandwich or something. It had a platform for communion. It had a piano and that was it. Uh, was used for uh, anything that happened in Overbrook. It was used for Sunday school. We eventually used it for church. 
uh, on the Sunday evening. And then we had a teenage club and we could have dances there or small get-togethers. Well, when we, when we got St. Uh, uh, Paul's Church, we never really went back to St. Lucy's. I guess at that point, St. Lucy's was sold. And we just went to, uh, we just went to St. Paul's. St. Paul's was located on Prince Albert. Well, St. Paul's, we decided at some point, the St. Overbrook had grown up and we wanted a church. So we left St. Margaret's and put out bids for, and my cousins got the bid and built the church. And uh, we moved in and worked very hard to pay it off. We paid it off just and I'm sure you would know Bishop Baycroft closed. And we were very, very disappointed. We were amalgamated with the church del St. Christopher's and uh, uh, we went with them. They were in a garage. We had a church. They refused to come and to Overbrook. It was a bad place and they wouldn't come to Overbrook. So they sold our church and they, they opened Epiphany. The, it's located on Ogilvy Road and uh, we, I've been in the church we never joined the church. I was told not very long ago by a lady that's at St. Aidan's that her husband was very bad at Ivy and I for not going to uh, Epiphany. And I certainly gave her the reasons and that was the end of that. I have memories of of going to the tabernacle to daily vacation Bible school in the summer and they had a lot of uh, in the tabernacle at that time they had a lot of revivals and people used to come from the states to do these revivals and uh, one family was there and they were very vocal. It became quite loud and I was there and uh, my mom had to come and get me because I got so excited I passed out and the revival had to stop. I was on the floor, so they got my mom, and my mom came, and of course everything stopped. I, w I was not invited back. My aunt, my Aunt Laura, she owned the grocery store, and the store was about two doors down from us on the other side of the street. My cousins lived next door. That was board and construction, and they built St. Paul's Church. Uh, I had two cousins. Their names was Johnny and Albert McRae. They went overseas. Not they did not fight in the war, but they were overseas. My brother fought in the war, uh, and Mr. McLeod, I believe, was killed in the war, 
and I don't I don't know I know when I went to public school every once in a while we would send a, a parcel over to one of the boys that went from Overbrook to the moor. Uh, my brother got quite a few. Uh, uh, certainly, certainly not because the teacher loved them or anything, but because she always, he always helped. Like if something got broken in the school, a window or anything, she just got him to fix it. So I guess she eventually thought he deserved something or other, I don't know. But anyway, the war rationing affected some, but not as much as others because my mom and a friend used to share coupons, like if she liked something that my mom didn't like, they would share. So they uh, really, and the other lady, uh, because uh, she didn't, uh, uh, I don't know how to put it. Uh, well, she didn't have the responsibilities my mother had with my brother. So if something came on sale, she would run up town and bring my mom some too. So it helped having friends. Mm -hmm. You know, she was never able to do that with her sister uh, because uh, my aunt that owned the store, uh, she was just very much for looking after herself. Well, a butter was rationed. Uh, sugar, of course, was rationed. Peanut butter was rationed. Uh, I guess some meats, probably, but I'm not too sure. But I know a lot of baking stuff was rationed. Overbrook during the Depression, the only time we would see a homeless person was they would come on the tracks and they would come to your house just for uh, something to eat. Uh, it, it was, uh, everybody was helpful in giving that even though I know even though my parents didn't have anything, my mom would certainly share what, it, what she had. And everybody felt that way. They weren't bad people. They were in problems. Yeah. Uh, about, uh, we lived about five houses from the railroad tracks. And that's where Vanier Parkway is today. Just uh, there, the only shack there was in Overbrook was right across from our house. It, it was an older man that was crippled and he, everybody, children were scared of him. He, he was not a bad person, but it, I think it was just because he didn't talk to anybody or he didn't bother with us, so myself included were frightened. And his name was Mr. Benum. Now that shack, the shack would have been removed uh, when people were building wartime houses. because my brother-in-law, his family were the ones that were building the wartime houses in Overbrook. Yes, I do remember the footbridge. 
and it went up every summer, was taken down every winter, and that's when you could go across on the ice. The footbridge would probably go up at the end of April, probably, and it would come down, I would say October, before the bad weather started. It was, it had, the footbridge had uh, railings. It was uh, just wood, uh, very well trestled. That's about, that's about it. That, that was the footbridge. I was only nervous when, before, when it didn't have the railings up yet. But once they put the railings up, I was fine. Never knew why the footbridge disappeared. Yes, we were all disappointed when it yeah. disappeared. There was no way to get to Strathcona Park if you didn't have the footbridge. Then you would have to bus it all the way around, which you wouldn't do. Right. There were campgrounds because the weatheralls lived on one side of River Road, and on the other side, on the river side, they had little camp houses, little cottages, and they rented those. The floods got very bad. Uh, my father and my uncle used to bring people up in a boat from the, from the bus stop up Queen Mary Street uh, to get them through the water. I would think that the floods would stop probably around where my Aunt Laura had her grocery store. The Gladmans, as far as I know, they were gardeners and they had, uh, they sold flowers and vegetables and they were located uh, closer to River Road on King George. The Scarfs uh, were neighbors of ours and they lived on uh, Prince Albert and there was another Scarf family lived on Kiefer. That's Preslin Road now. Yes, we had, we had quite a few uh, families. We had the Wolves and they had cattle. We had Sylvester's, and they had uh, they had uh, greenhouses because my father always went to Sylvester's to buy my mom a calcellary every year to give to me to give to my mom. The wolves lived right on River Road in a very big house, a very big stone house, close to the Rideau Tennis Club. On Queen Mary, there were Westons, and they were construction people. They built most of the houses in Overbrook, that the newer houses in Overbrook. Uh, I don't know, oh, my, my uncle, he lived on Kiefer. He had, a, he had uh, gardens that uh, he sold uh, what he grew. His name was Herbert Wicker. And we all worked on, in his gardens, oh. uh, picking whatever. So no, he didn't have children. His wife was a wonderful woman. I don't really think we ever got paid. Uh, you just did it. It was just like during the war, after school, we were all picked up in a wagon and taken to Eastview to pick whatever uh, carrots or beets or 
that was the war effort. Well, the only businesses we had in Ottawa were Overbrook. In, in Overbrook, were the, uh, the board and construction. Uh, my aunt's grocery store. Uh, we had a meat market, and the meat market was on River Road, and it was called Press Meat Market. Uh, we always had to go for our own mail, uh, which we still do. And the post office was on River Road, right at the end of Queen Mary Street. It was addressed to 93 Queen Mary, and Ottawa. Overbrook, no. Or oh. was it just a box? No. Oh, I think, yeah, excuse me. I think we just had a box number. We had a Rennie Sundries, which was on River Road too, and it was it was more like cigarettes and soft drinks, stuff like that. They moved up onto Dardle Street. It's now changed hands, but it's a meat market now. And, uh, but it's it, it's still it's still the same not by the same people but uh, it, it was the same store my mom shopped either uptown at Loblaws or she shopped in Overbrook and she went by she walked to River Road took the bus up got her groceries and carried them home, and somebody would meet her at River Road to help her up the street. Overbrook uh, was Overbrook. There was no paved streets. There wasn't sidewalks. There was ditches. It was a good place to grow up.